Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Linkwe, a weekly conversation about tech that is decidedly low tech. My name is Akeem, and I'm joined by Marco Sanakum. And today we have with us in the studio our retained guest, Nicholas Mendez. Hi, everyone. I am an instructor at UE, Saint Augustine Campus, and I teach the web courses here. Awesome, awesome. And we have Nicholas on, it's not by chance. Now, Nicholas is a retained guest. So yeah, our first retained guest. So thanks so much for uh, coming back. Uh, we didn't that's clearly that. didn't scare you off the, the first time. So that's good. <laughs> and um, one of the things that asked us, uh, that, that uh, made us think of inviting you back was you asked some interesting questions in the Caribbean developer group, which we are a part of and we enjoy thoroughly. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really interesting because I see the mention of Kaku and I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do with Kaku. Well, it's just a messaging app, really. Um, they have people uh, and users could message each other um, individually. Mm -hmm. We also want users to be able, well, authorize users to have this idea, have topics. And um, okay. when they send a message to the topic, everyone who subscribed to it will get those messages relevant to them. Basically. All right. So that's, All yeah, right. that's the gist of it. OK, OK. So um, and I guess in. On the surface, Kafka is a uh, messaging service in the raw sense of the word. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that it kind of prompted is, and it, maybe for mm -hmm. us, is that messaging does have different meanings mm -hmm. in the sort of computing mm -hmm. world. And I do remember like um, back when I first started many, many, many moons ago. <laughs> um, I, I had a book on messaging. I had a, a, a JMS book on messaging. I had a book on um, Java oh, beans. Need to, uh, and, yeah, explain yeah. the acronym, by the way. Yeah, 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 right. Sorry, sorry. Yes. So JMS is the is Java messaging service. Um, and EJB is Enterprise Java Beans because I thought I was going to get into that like world, but specifically I did my degree in systems and actually um, mm. I, I, every, when I did a search for anything like that, those technologies came up. And the history there is that Java from the get-go was pitched as thin client. They had that concept of thin clients, and while they had soup, which is Clean. I don't I don't even remember what the acronym now, but it's the very heavy. There wasn't much simple about it. That's for sure. That's it. That's, it was not simple, and. Yeah. Java had a, a they built a lot of things um, for RPC re remote procedure calls, um, mm -hmm. and they had a messaging system to facilitate this thin client. And the way it really the concept is that you would do something in your Java application, but it would be taken to the server side to be processed, and that's where the messaging sort of protocols or the messaging pipelines was kind of created. Um, so GMS is one of those earlier ones. Since then, it's, it's interesting because things have come kind of full circle, um, as as it's want to do in technology, right? So it's like, you know, I show. Cobol programmers are recognizing concepts like, oh, this is new. I've been doing this forever, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so it, I think like messaging is one of those things. Marcus, give us a more modern perspective on the messaging okay. landscape. I, I like how you mentioned RPC, right? And just so people, when they see gRPC as this hot thing, and everyone loves like, the yeah, protocols yeah. and these kind of things. I feel that's the key thing I want to get. This this tech world and the impermeable universe, maybe, I'm not going that far. That's not the podcast. It's a cycle. These things come <laughs> and go all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like yep. the key thing is this notion of how we concentrate systems and how we distribute them and the kind of cycles we go into there. And I figure at this time, our messaging systems are really important because we have more distributed systems. 
And that's the reality of SaaS applications we build nowadays. Um, how we have microservices and the idea of scale and how people can probably make requests of certain elements and we want to scale those things up. Our current needs in tech requires distributed systems and not decentralized, very different things. Let's um, let people know that this is not a blockchain specific thing, <laughs> but distributed <laughs> the components being spread out and autonomous to some degree. And what we get with the messaging systems is a way that the logic, like just because you have autonomous systems, that doesn't mean they don't have to work in tandem. So if you are buying a plane ticket, you have to go, you have to actually like book the plane ticket first before you pay the price. So you still have to go and be like, all right, I want um, this thing to happen first, get this response. And then from that, let that processing continue on to the actual payment. And that's where the messaging really comes in. It's a way for systems to communicate across networks. I mean, not just internal networks, even external networks as well, to kind of mm -hmm. get the, like, the business logic spread across mm -hmm. and kind of guaranteed. The complexity of the network layer is different from having the complexity in code and having it all in one space. And I think that's mm -hmm. where messaging protocol kind of helps manage that complexity now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I, I like the example you, you use because I know we have some Caribbean airline developers and so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, let us know how you're using messaging <laughs> because it's a real good example in that more specifically booking the tickets um, and I guess has a, a few things in place like there's a question of availability and there's a question of price and those would live mm -hmm. with different departments so mm -hmm. each department might have had different systems for mm -hmm. those you know what we call domains and the messaging kind of helps organize that flow through the different systems and i think a more um directly relevant example might be something as simple as you know you're making a cool wordpress site um, mm -hmm. And that right now is what, yeah, I mean, we didn't have a word for this a few years ago, but that's what yeah. you would call your monolith, right? Everything right. lives within <laughs> that application. You see, mm -hmm. you want to allow people to upload images, mm -hmm. um, but you're, you're free, to, you know, is the, the region. So, you know, you know, people come in with all kinds of pics. So, you see, you can put some moderation on that. And when the person uploads the image, you have to do moderation. You might do image resizing. You might do mm -hmm. other things. So you don't want the person to be on the connection while all of that going on. So you might break mm -hmm. off the image stuff into something else. And that mm -hmm. is your first microservice. Mm. So <laughs> to facilitate that communication, that's where you use these messaging systems because now you could put that resize image command in a message Elsewhere. queue and exactly. let her go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Now, the, so that, and that's where things like Kafka comes in because Kafka from, um, was started by LinkedIn. Um, and they had a more big data usage because, you know, they had data engineers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they are putting information constantly into a pipeline and they are monitoring those things in real time. And that's, I think, where the topics and stuff or the concept of topics also come in. So I feel like there's two sort of areas in server-side messaging. There's that sort of pub-sub use case that I described mm -hmm. earlier. And I guess, Marcus, you could talk a little bit about that and in tools. And then there is the real-time data streaming use case mm -hmm. that other tools um, kind of kind of leverage. So let me talk a little bit about the pub-sub. Sure. Use case. I think that's that's closer to the WordPress one that I gave, where right. you're just putting things in a queue and thing. Like, right. what are some right. options there if that is the route you want to take? Oh, uh, I think, um, and we'll touch this a bit more later. But there's the AMQP protocol. It's actually like a message queue protocol. I I don't know who invented it, but kudos to these guys who invented <laughs> the entire protocol for message queues, and they have implementations up on top of that. And one of the really cool things is uh, Rabbit MQ. And just to kind of give a bit more context, you can do pub stuff with just HTTP if you really want to. You could send mm -hmm. a request, publish it that way, and you could continue polling for the response or like a reply and just updates as you come along. However, like uh, it sounds tedious and it actually does have a, a element of latency on your own network if you implement it that way. So that's why these things exist in the first place. Mm -hmm. And uh, with Robert MQ, I like how they like, said like topics and subscribe to topics because they all have similar things. Uh, unsurprisingly, Robert MQ has a 
Q. Now his name may have suggested. <laughs> and you, you can literally clever, publish. Clever. <laughs> you, know, you can publish to that Q and you can have any system like more like a distributed reading, listening on that Q, consuming that Q. And I give like a cool example would be like a, a bot in a Slack chat. I'm not saying Slack users are of them Q. I think they use um, some similar streaming service or their real time monitoring API. However, let's say you're typing a message, you put a message command that will start with a slash or something or whatever it is, or even like a Facebook message, I say had bots as well. You put that command and that will go to the same message room as usual, but it's processed like, hey, this is actually a bot command. Send it to this uh, bot processing queue. Determine which bot actually uses that. I was like, all right, this is the bot for polls. Like, right, and like with polls, like, hey, are we going to break over protocols or something today and line? I was like, yeah, so that bot goes there and that goes on a rapid MQ queue. And then the bot will actually process it. So the bot doesn't live within Slack the messaging app. It just communicates that way. And whenever it's ready, mm -hmm. it does a busy Slack message with that. And that's like a, a, a kind of cursory example of how it could work. I'm not saying Slack uses rapid MQ. I don't have insider information. But that's like, these are the kind of things that, like a typical use case for it. Yeah, using that, using Patreon, MySQL. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, I read like, a whole like, blog. <laughs> it was HTTP. They had a real time yeah. API that doesn't yeah. want to tell us it. I was like, well, yeah. what's the protocol for HTTP? Like, I know what happened here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that sounds like a poll. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing. With, with these queues, you see, you're still doing a lot of polling. You're doing a lot mm -hmm. of long polling. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, our team, we use SQS um, wherever we could. And mm -hmm. it's really a long pool that it's doing behind the scenes. SQS is a service <laughs> provided by AWS. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, we had the streaming, that the heavy stuff that that's what Nicholas getting into. Heavy stuff. Kafka stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so excited. Uh, <laughs> but the, 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 the other sort of, I think, new use case, and to be honest, we, the very few businesses actually need this and in, 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 in thing is the live stream is the live the video yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like streaming. seeing everything yeah. yeah like and it's not just it's not just video it's data it's click streams mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your is is really when you want to monitor and know hey mm -hmm. something went wrong and you want to know then and there those are the benefits of like kafka and kinesis which um, Amazon also provides, because they make it easy for you to put something, at least on the AWS side, I'll speak to that um, since we have more experience there. You put your Lambda on, you see an event come through, hey, this user didn't get through with this transaction. It happened once, you ping, it happened twice, you know, and then they can write some code and say, okay, if it happened five times, raise an alarm, let somebody look into that. That's where the real-time streaming comes in. That's where, you know, you start to throw out all the big, the big mm -hmm. data acronyms and stuff like that. And we ourselves, we have a client where there's that need, uh, but we don't even use it in that way, to be honest. We still end up putting all the events into a log and then monitoring on the log now. So we don't, right. you know, like, so it's not as easy as you would think to leverage these live stream or get the full benefits of it because with that benefit comes complexity um, in terms mm -hmm. of, because of what it's doing, it doesn't use standard protocols. So as such, you don't get to use standard SDKs. So ironically, the history of Java comes into play there. It's no surprise that a lot of these services are actually Java based. Mm -hmm. So um, whether it's Kinesis or like, they are it written in actually, Java, they're written in C for a reason. <laughs> Um, and that's because they're not using sort of standard um, protocols to do what it is because it has to push mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. message to the clients, right? Now, the next thing um, that kind of came to mind is you also mentioned, Nicholas, that the one of the first things as you were building this application that came to mind was like using Google Cloud messaging. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. I've never used it personally. Right. So that is, I would say, the thing I have most experience in when it comes to messaging. And we know we have mm -hmm. the different approaches to doing it. You have the polling, like you said. Uh, they have server-side events, uh, okay. server-sent events. But Google Cloud Messaging lets you do push notifications, right? Whether it's to Android 
um, or even web clients, right? Mm-hmm. Where you have a progressive web app listen to the notifications. So I've used mm-hmm. that before where um, you write to the database and you could set up a cloud function that when a write happens, just trigger and send off um, you know, net messages to clients. And in the protocol for GCM, Google Cloud Messaging, you have the topics there already. So you can have right, okay. to talk it topics, or mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. Um, you want somebody to send from a device to the device, you just use the device IDs. So it's okay. it's a nice solution. However, okay. again, because they are managing a lot of the complexity for you, you can't mm-hmm. really customize certain things. Maybe you want to right. in a certain way. Maybe I don't want to think about end-to-end encryption your own way because you want to store your messages in another database. So yeah, that's the trade-off. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Right. I got you. I got you. Okay. And I, in my thing, in my like, see on it, I see a big red banner. They say GCM is no more. They're trying to push it towards Firebase now. Um, so it, it, it does sound like um, it is definitely closer in the wheelhouse. I did get a strong impression that it was really for devices as opposed to a more general, like, Clients, though they do say they support like web clients, but I imagine you still have to use their SDK uh, yeah. to think versus like, is it you're using a raw API? Maybe um, there, is, uh, there is a REST API for it, I believe, but mm-hmm. there is a JavaScript SDK for, for your browsers. And you okay. need to be yeah. a service worker there, and then you initial, you essentially pass the registration object of the service worker to the Firebase. Um, Right, 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 right. And I think we kind of gave this its own sort of part in the messaging landscape because these are more like messaging APIs, right? So it feels like that's in the wheelhouse Mm -hmm. of 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 Mm -hmm. like even Facebook messaging API because they have a messaging platform, but you could use the APIs to send messages and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not something we have like a strong, you know, ex- experience. And although we've done things with messaging APIs, I guess, by the way of like Slack chatbots, you know, mm-hmm. um, we had some fun with that and we have done um, Facebook chat um, things as well. But mm-hmm. it's kind of like what you said, Nicholas, it definitely abstracts a lot of, um, what is what messaging entails from you, and you just kind of get to use whatever they provide. Mm-hmm. Um, so if it is that you are, you know, wanting to maybe incorporate messaging into some other product, maybe those are the sort of like the channels to explore, so that you're not building from scratch. You kind of mm-hmm. get everything you need. But if you're looking for work like our partner Mendez, another thing you might want to explore is looking at the messaging protocols. You get into the very least, <laughs> you roll up your sleeves, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you start, you know, to, yeah, 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 you get to the underlying thing. Because we mentioned that word protocols a few times in the other parts that we talk, we talk about. But Marcus, I want you to dive into a little bit what messaging yeah. protocols are and right and i think um just uh i probably want to talk about the appreciation for what a protocol is right mm-hmm. so we know the idea of like we code and we know like html css and javascript these are protocols these are kind of standard languages but protocols is how we actually get html by the browser we use http that describes how like the server actually communicates over a network to us so that's the key thing. These messaging things have, they, you can use HTTP as well. And I think Firebase said, exposes a REST API. So like with that service, you can do chats and messaging with HTTP. Quick quiz. <laughs> what layer on your OSI model is HTTP? <laughs> is- that would be... Oh my goodness, I have not applied for a job interview in ages. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> However, I'm going to say... Uh, Oh boy, oh boy, Nicholas, I give you a time to Google it. Yeah, I'll find it. As an EMQP? No, like, no, what layer into the OSI? Oh, yes, I want like, HTTP. Trans, not after transport. Oh, HTTP that. is application. Like, um, application. Nice. All right, good. 
So you, you see the one who not or going on the online course is going to refresh on this knowledge. <laughs> uh, your co-workers are going to be upset with you with the company mandated. <laughs> you know, class refreshed, tutored by Mr. Mendez. <laughs> lunch and limiters, lunch and limiters. Lunch and limiters. <laughs> <laughs> go right. ahead i interrupted you <laughs> yeah no problem but actually no that's actually good because these are protocols that also reside in that similar application layer right they don't actually interfere or change the fact that like udp and these kind of things send the packets and how the packets are sent at mm -hmm. those lower network levels so let's start off with uh this one that's been here for a while xmpp now i actually the confusion with this that you might think is old it's old school http because one is really old it's been there for ages as XML based and uh, mm -hmm. give it any con the context of time, XML was the hot thing for for many years before Java or Java JSON really really took foothold. So this is this open XML based standard. Uh, WhatsApp started with this standard. Um, they have like I looked at some code with Python libraries. It 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 doesn't look too bad now, but I mean of course that's what SDK is put right now wrapper around the actual XML packets they have to send. And again, these things, not HTTP, they, do, they don't have to do long polling. At the core of it is really, I think even most of the messaging protocols that we're looking at, there's kind of pub sub happening. I mean, there's like a, a, publish, a, a publish and subscriber model happening here. Similar to, you could say, for your signal protocol, the differences in the actual messaging interface, and like I'm trying to say, is the same, but it's the same kind of pub sub methodology they're using. It's just that the focus is a lot more on encryption. And if you know the name Signal Protocols, because the Signal app was first an open source program based on our protocol, and then became its own version of it. Mm -hmm. And I believe even WhatsApp adopted the Signal Protocol for their messages to some degree. And Facebook Messenger, the secret chats they have, that's actually using Signal Protocol as well, when it's encrypted per device. So I think the key difference with Signal Protocol is how you set up your authentication part and how you use device information to start communicating. Well, that was a right. difference with me. It's like, wow, it's a lot of setup just to say hi. But um, yeah, <laughs> and I think the purpose for it was security related. I think right. one I want to really touch on, because popular as well, is actually WebSockets. And WebSockets, uh, it's it is something on like a greater version of HTTP. So yes, yeah, not separate protocol, but the usage is actually pretty cool. Like when you said the chat, like because I was like, oh yeah, chat is like web sockets for me. Like one I, time, one time web browser. Me too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it's literally meant between it gives like this two way communication between a web server and a browser. Mm -hmm. And that's literally all it's meant to do. And yeah, you can do chat apps, but you can do any kind of data being passed around. Um I don't think I'll make all my apps use web sockets. There's a RAM overhead. Um when I try to implement authentication web sockets, I kind of put this thing where the WebSocket connection have a JWT in it, and then I passed that. Like I, I couldn't really figure out because they already have headers and stuff to use. Right. So there are some little right. things you kind of have to figure out when you're. I, I'm not gone for WebSocket, and it is a bit more complicated than just HTTP. But you do get that two-way communication, and um, yeah, yeah, it's it's really good. It works really well. It's been adopted by most browsers, so you are kind of mm -hmm. good to go there. And I actually want to just touch back on the kind of rapid MQ. AMQP1. Uh, actually, I'll make sure I'm spelling that correctly. But uh, that is the kind of, yeah, advanced messaging queuing protocol, which is a way, again, it's not, it is the pop up model, but it's physically meant to have it in a queue and kind of be processed one at a time. I think that's a key thing. It doesn't have yes. to be, but it's kind of really meant to be like, hey, this happens first, process this first, get out the queue, and do what you got to do from there. So um, yeah, there's like an overview of different messaging protocols. Uh, yeah, and they can, again, it's because they're not strictly HTTP, there's a different. When you want to do a WebSocket connection, you have to do a bit more work on the card and the server side to enable that. Uh, when you want to do like um, XMPP or use Signal protocol, is not the same as these typical get posts on the thing request. It's like a brand new connection. Yes, it uses the internet, but a completely brand new connection, and you have to send messages in that way. So um, yeah, but, and they are, other alternatives, uh, you know, we think about open source that we get a, ton, a thousand messaging app for only LibreOffice for Word, right? But uh, so there are <laughs> actually many other <laughs> messaging protocols right. and applications there, but I feel like these are some of the really biggest and core cool ones. Then, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Socket mm -hmm. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so say we do any topic thing, right? Um, your, your clients will have to be online to receive the messages. 
Mm -hmm. So you want to do something whereby um, the broadcast went out already, but because I've been subscribed, when I log in, I can still see, you know, those messages queue in. But can you, would right. you be able to do that with WebSockets? Because I imagine if you no. want to. That's a good question, and that's exactly what I had to do. Like when I was thinking about, I said I made an example thing with Kafka, and just to kind of get you through. And I was like, how do I persist messages sent on WebSockets? And what I did is that I made the message call to send a message at HTTP call, a CFC database, and it sends to the WebSockets to be broadcasted. Okay. So right. afterwards, you can just okay. So like, right. I didn't put that complexity on WebSockets. That's what it's not what it's meant for. So mm -hmm. like, hey, let's make the system cater right. for this need. Yeah. Right. So the WebSocket is really for the real-time communication. Exactly. Just for that back and forth. Yeah. And yeah. I think your use case, you have maybe two concerns. The well, or three. The real-time communication, yes. The authentication and the need to um, do things specific to a topic. So I guess mm -hmm. authentication and authorization are the mm -hmm. sort of maybe major concerns of mm -hmm. your use case. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that is interesting. And one of the I just this is more of a factoid thing because like um well more generally, as Marcus said, it had real ways to go about it. And it, it don't have no right <laughs> way. And that's what I was thinking. There's never a right way. Right? Mm -hmm. you, it's just trying to figure out, hey, what are the boundaries that you mm -hmm. are working with? based on the requirements, based on your resources available. And you really just had to choose the best product mix. And I think a big part of what we're discussing is the pros and cons of the different routes, yeah. you yeah. know? And a lot of it's also the layered, the protocol layer thing is an interesting part as well to the discussion because we hear protocol come up all the time in different ways and a protocol is just a standardization that's like literally what it means we tend to standardize <laughs> things so we don't reinvent the wheel and mm -hmm. we have protocols at different layers mm -hmm. and it's no wonder a lot of the chat protocols are based on xml a lot of uh, things are based on xml I, i'm glad that you brought that up because a little known factoid is that actually a lot of the markup languages are descendants of sgml um, so that is why those things are popular. <laughs> and that's why they all look so similar. Um, so IBM created this in the 60s, and we are benefiting from that to this day. But that kind of markup is very verbose. Mm -hmm. And that is why you have other protocols coming up that are binary protocols like gRPC that mm -hmm. are just a little bit more succinct, so it uses up less bits in the pipeline however you're transferring that data mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so that's that's a, a, a important distinction there as well so given all these options let, let, let me just like spitball a few things let me assume we're going to make the let me assume nicholas making the next discord <laughs> what is this ideal stack I'll let Marcus, you go first, because Nick, Nicholas is working on this. So. Right. <laughs> You're making the next Discord. Yeah. Marcus, right. what, what are you using? Right, after you put an emoji service on a meme service, I might have to go. <laughs> um, actually, it's not well, one thing about... <laughs> right, sorry. <yeah. laughs> it's not a chat service. One thing about chat, and even using WebSockets and trying to play with, like, probably a few captures. I definitely don't want to maintain it. It's fine to run on my Docker locally. I don't want to maintain this going forward with my own servers. I actually, it's interesting. I don't think it needs streams for this. And um, I will look for a service like Kinesis where I can be able to partition things. Or I might use something like socket.io so the very start, you suck at IO, which is pretty good for chatting and routine. It's like a a wrapper around WebSocket stuff point. It takes a lot of the complexity around it on the client and the server side. So I might use socket IO to kind of get the messaging starting. And for all the emoji services and the bots and the other useful things as well, I would probably have um, a managed queue service or if not a queue or streaming thing. Uh, the interesting thing about 
huge services like all these SPS, for example, is that the payload is really small. Like they it don't allow much a high payload. And given that it's emojis and videos and gifs and everything else, I actually might use like a, <laughs> a Kinesis kind of thing for that on the server side to send and receive right. from there and have different services. So that's my instinct. Socket that you to quickly start up with like a wrapper on web sockets, but to quickly get going on real time communication. I think as a fallback with long polling when web sockets aren't available. So it kind of mm-hmm. keeps us for a lot of cases. And then um, stream for distributed things. As I just want the chat app to be just chat. And everything right. else with Discord and the dark team will come after. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> Nicholas. All right. So it, you know, it's funny you mentioned Discord because um, are you all familiar with the? But we're talking about just text Discord, not voice. Oh gosh! All right. <laughs> I didn't make a distinction. So, so, so you didn't actually. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah you know, you're familiar with this exclusive app called Clubhouse. Yes. Yes. yes, I've heard about it. I've heard I've seen about it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There is uh, there is an alternative for the rest of us called Doge House, and it's built by um, okay. it's built by a YouTuber called Ben Award, and he is open source and he had a very interesting oh, okay. architecture. So oh. I would draw inspiration from there. All right. And he was experimenting right. with yeah. Elixir, so he has a Elixir oh, okay. that's handling, um, I believe, the registrations in some parts, but the voice part is a separate voice server because it's some totally different scaling requirements for that mm-hmm. end. And then between mm-hmm. them, there's a Rabbit mm-hmm. MQ, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. I believe I'm using the web sockets for the voice server and, and the clients. So something along those lines, I think I would look at. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Cool, and it works cool, really cool. well. It's really nice. All right. Elixir is the first time yeah. outside of Final Fantasy setting. I'd actually use yeah. like a. <laughs> 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 Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's like an interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting for real, for real. All right. So I think um, I think my approach would be similar to uh, Marcus Owen um, in that the, I would use something specific uh, that's good for real time for the chat. And then hopefully any sort of processing to some kind of queue system just to manage it. Um, the authentication concerns, yeah, I'd probably handle it in, in a similar way that Marcus mentioned, where do it at the front and at the back. And mm-hmm. anything to do with making sure people could only talk on the right you know, um, topic and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we'd put in front of it before the mm-hmm. chat start. But I wouldn't, yeah. Uh, yeah I would, I would not fight up too much um, on that part of the requirement because standard stuff would deal with that. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. All right. So now I, I, more and more. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, we need to make a national elite system, some kind of emergency system. What are you using there? I'll start with you, Nicholas. Okay, Mark, let me give Marcus time to think. <laughs> <laughs> is a kind of the use case that's really, really related to the project I'm working on. So mm. that's actually oh, okay. Yeah. That. So I guess whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm investigating now. <laughs> <what I'm doing. laughs> All right, that's an easy answer. <laughs> um, Marcus. Right. Uh, and it's interesting. I feel I'm not too sure about this. And I thought a lot about this. Like, you know, for Trinidad, if a fisherman gang robbed, it might have used a smoke signal because that's for reception purposes. However, uh, when you're assuming that they have emergency systems, I might do a speed evaluation. So we do want the subscription of uh, these emergency notices to be really quick. And mm-hmm. I'm actually not too sure for your technologies what is the best for speed. So I haven't actually evaluated that. So that's something um, I still have to do a little bit more research on, uh, assuming that you yeah, want the topic to the, the so the consumer for emergency notices might be the same, more or less, right? They might go to a central hub, and then they might disperse to the police. Right. To the ambulance, and that's, right? What, and that's <laughs> what I'm thinking as well. I'm thinking mm-hmm. this is a central point wanting to broadcast to, to different people. For mm-hmm. me, I would, I would use the AWS technologies that I am familiar uh-huh. with. Right. So that I would put that into a notification system. So I'd use probably something like SNS. SNS. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd probably use a combination of SQS, which is a queue system plus SNS. I want to make sure that the message is sent out, like it, like it, it mm-hmm. gets processed. 
Mm -hmm. um, the SNS is just the broadcast. And because it's an emergency system, you, you had to account for a really broad range of technical mm -hmm. capabilities or lack thereof. So that nice. is why I would still rely on text message. I would still rely mm -hmm. on just like really mm -hmm. be able on email, on whatever. So that's mm -hmm. where the SNS is handy because mm -hmm. I want to be able to broadcast to many channels as as many channels as possible. Um, so yeah, do, that would be my technology picks there. Mm -hmm. You're making the next ride sharing app. All right. And so I know I know I know we had like five or six ride sharing right. know, providers I, going on here. And I'm, I'm not going to inspect Tab and see the network request on myself, <laughs> but uh, I could <laughs> from, uh, you know uh, ha having maybe some experience but looking and seeing like what really going on here is a lot of HTTP requests. And it's interesting, right? Of course, because you know. Or in our right share service, that could be a standard for HTTP. I think the tricky thing is um, when do you want to get the real time notice? It's probably when you want to see the driver coming towards you. And maybe for security feature, when you want to broadcast your in transit experience, right? And I'm not a super duper expert in GPS, but I'm assuming there's a connection that kind of tracks the location to and from. And at this point, I actually would. Act I actually will use a stream for this because that real-time data is super important, at least for me. I want to kind of know all files like, hey, this is happening here, especially for like, the security concerns when I'm traveling and let's see in a foreign country. And, um, you know, I know it's something about, uh, we, we know countries like ours. It's like, hey, you know, maybe I should just let my family know where I am. And <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, I actually want that to be real-time and broadcasted and available to at least myself and to others. To kind of know it's like yeah i'm going on the right path so that for me is a stream to run through pay your money and protect your citizens <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well um if we're allowed to use cloud stuff then i could easily mm -hmm. could, could easily approach this with the firebase real-time database we have mm -hmm. some really mm -hmm. nice three-way synchronization i guess four-way because you could have the driver the rider and then right. the database, and it's all sync in a Google map, and you get the tracking of the box. Right. I guess cool. that structure your data. So, um, just put out, just put out some coordinates every now and again, so you can kind of see the timeline. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you know FCM as well. So when the driver is nearby, when you confirm, you could send a push message to the rider. So a lot of things mm -hmm. you can do if, I, if we allow to. One question. So is it you trying? I'm uh, just uh, hypothetically. Would you on a summer project just create a right share enough using <laughs> just because I see like with that like, like from what you describe when that mm -hmm. does describe the core features of <laughs> a right sharing application. Yeah, I built some some sort. It wasn't for ride sharing, but for like other projects, I have built things where somebody could send a driver could send. Uh, well, we try to do a kind of geofencing, right? So right, right, with, the, mm -hmm. with the um the the notifications, web doesn't support geofencing, but Android apps support it. So when you walk in a certain area, um, you'll get notifications. So that's what geofencing is. Is is notifications based on where you are. But I guess our own was time-based and geofence. So at a certain time, people within a certain area will get a notification. And all we do is you send what you call a data notification, which won't trigger anything on the user app. And then we have um, and then we have some um, I have some code on the client that's gonna look at the notification, look at like the target coordinates. You know, calculate, am I close to that target coordinate? And if I'm in that area, then show a local notification. So we, you know, did a little nice work around. And it was it was not hard to do. We use Firebase functions. I know I'm using a lot of Google technologies, but I kind of have a relationship with Google with that. Like, don't you organize yeah. Google? I'm not gonna say that's not, that's not really surprising, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, it's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think, yeah. so I think we are all in agreement there. And I think the key things to point out is that those kind of like messaging technologies, uh, Firebase messaging, uh, Kinesis and those things come up when timeliness is involved. So like Nicholas mm -hmm. mentioned the in his application, there was a, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the time dimension was important. And, and I think in a similar fashion, Marcus, you know, when you describe it like, hey, 
you, you need information within a block of time because if you get an update on where a user is and they already reached, then it's too late. Mm -hmm. So definitely those technologies are important for that because if you try to do it doing polling, there's still for you to get a sense of timeliness, then you had a poll uh, with yeah. a very high frequency. <laughs> And exactly. you're using up people's data, you know, like you're using up people's data. <laughs> exactly. Um, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> so that is where these messaging tools are, are a little bit more efficient. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. And I, I'm going to show, I have one surprise. So I have one surprise. Um, you're going to make a blog aggregator for the CDG group. What, <laughs> 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 what would you use? A blog aggregator. Ah, mm -hmm. Yes. I'm interested. I'm probably using a, a Firebase function that would. But we see an aggregator. It has the task of looking across the internet and searching for blogs, or do we know the exact blog websites you want we to? We know it. So yeah, all we know developers the will need to submit their blog to it. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. it will need to kind of keep the feed up to date. Mm -hmm. And there would be a, a, a concept of folks subscribing to a particular topic. So like if you're more interested in the JavaScript type thing, then you could look at that as a topic. If you're more interested in Golang, you look at that as a topic. Mm -hmm. If you're more interested in, in a broad sense front end, you could do that. So the idea would be to categorize the different blogs that exist there. And um, so I, again, I'll probably use another Firestore database that it just it just categorizes the blogs. And then maybe mm -hmm. blogs will have RSS. So I could tap mm -hmm. into that the updates and then push it to whoever's interested on a particular category. Mm -hmm. All right. Marcus. Yeah. Similar kind of concept, but uh, I guess AWS land for me because of familiarity. So we have, we definitely want the RSS feeds and um, probably periodically. The good thing is that no one writes blogs. I mean, you know, most human beings don't write up, don't write a blog a minute. So you kind of assume that there's some kind of time period where you could just check and it's like, yeah, maybe one a day, maybe two a day, like a career blogger. But like, yeah, at least probably two times a day, you could just have a schedule attached run and be like, hey, go through the RSS feeds, mm -hmm. pull these blogs, uh, do the process and to categorize everything like that, and then you can actually pass that off to maybe a DB or even make a next event so something else mm -hmm. called the front end parts. But um, yeah, yeah. That's cool, my cool, cool. <laughs> all right, all right. And I think for me, I think maybe I would expand on uh, both of your directions a little bit more. <laughs> for me, blogs, there are two ways. So you can, if you are using blog software, they could send a ping. So I mm -hmm. would have an endpoint that could get those things like, hey, Akeem just updated his blog. And for that, I would put right. that, yeah, that they could trigger. So I'd put a SQS uh, thing there so mm -hmm. that um, it would get processed in a queue because passing a blog could be intensive. I would have a separate job that whose job it is to just process uh, or pass blogs. And I would do that in a Lambda. And then mm -hmm. there is the, yeah, you still want to catch everybody for those who may not be using blog software and that i would you know again use a time uh, a lambda on a time-based lambda mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. one would execute as well and the messaging in here comes in handy to synchronize it too so we tend to do things um using event sourcing and that's probably a whole mm -hmm. set of different you know discussion but that will allow us to kind of make sure and leveraging the queue they would the, the processing would go into the same queue, whether it is a time base or whether it's from a thing, it would go into the same messaging queue that helps with the orchestration so that you don't end up mm -hmm. processing the same blog more than once. Um, and if you want people and coming out of that post processing, I would push that to something, even like WebSockets or whatever, just to keep my audience engaged so that, hey, something new, if, if that is your shtick. If it is that you just want to get a digest once a day, that's fine too. And that you could use something like SNS for. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this, like that last thing is like, you, you could see all the different messaging technologies kind of come into one use case. Mm -hmm. And for those mm -hmm. of you who are in CDG and developers, if you're interested in something like that, you, you could 
you can link up now admittedly when i saw um lasana uh job board i was like it, it reminded me we too made a similar yeah. commitment to make something <laughs> and always was such a blog aggregator it was some two mm -hmm. one or three years ago <laughs> uh, that's everything <laughs> but, but yeah if you're interested yeah. in seeing that get off the ground because i'm a huge fan of blog aggregators um it definitely helped get my get help me get visibility in the community mm -hmm. that i was involved in back then which was flash um so much so that because of my blogging the work that i did in open source was publishing books and that kind of, and that kind of thing um so it is you know interested in seeing something that we can do it we have some fun with messaging and, and and all that good stuff that we spoke about today Thank you so much for coming on the show, Nicholas. Um, I wish you well in your project. I'm looking forward to using it. Um, <laughs> I was a student and, and remember um, that the application yeah, yeah, has yeah, yeah, yeah. protocol. So thank you very much, you know. Right. Instructor we inside out. <laughs> <laughs> we will be in tune for lunch and learn for the Wipala team. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, you know, um, I hope everyone um, learned something. Don't forget, mm -hmm. like and subscribe. We are on Facebook. We are on, on, on YouTube. We are on Twitch. We we everywhere, right? We, we strand mm -hmm. in games on, on Fridays. Come through there as well. <laughs> um, so um, thanks so much for joining. Really uh, appreciate it. Yep.